Warning. The following podcast contains two morons talking about sophisticated subject matter, like ninus and hoo-hahs. Also, a few whoopsie-daisies and at least one house or ante. If you don't have a strong stomach, you know where the door is. Right. On with the shenanigans, then. The podcast which you are about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two washed-up losers. In particular, Court Psyops and his immature co-host, Matt. It was all the more tragic in that they were uncultured morons. But had they lived very, very full lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see each week. For them, an idiotic podcast show became a nightmare. The events of each week were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, Cinema Psyops, with Court and Matt. What is Psyops? Psyops for psychological operations is very simply the art of influencing how people feel and think and ultimately how they behave and what they do. You don't have to defeat the enemy on the battlefield. It's better if you can convince the enemy to do what you want him to do without having to fight him. And that's really the intent behind Psyops, to convince people to do what you want them to do. So how does Psyops fit into what's happening now? The two points I'd like to make with you and the audience is that first and foremost, PSYOP saves lives. The second thing I'd like to say, a lot of people have misconception about PSYOP. They think it's something deviant and brainwashing. you don't know exactly what's going on right now but we do know that there are some psyops going on right ma'am i don't know cinema psyops and i believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today why i believe that is because i know how it feels i know what it does to you cinema psyops they think it's something devious and brainwashing Welcome to 294 consecutive weeks of Cinema PsyOps. I'm your host, Court, the guy who is convinced that for some fucking reason he's still doing Morning Zoo Radio, and the man who was meant to be my gooch is my co-host, Matt! (laughs) Court the gooch. (laughs) Every weekday morning. Wake up with Court the gooch. (laughs) If you're looking around the radio studio... And you're not sure which one of you is the gooch. The go- you're you're definitely the gooch. The gooch yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, de- I'm definitely the gooch here. I'll admit it. I'm not proud. <laughs> no, clearly not. Otherwise, you wouldn't subject yourself to 294 consecutive weeks of verbal accosting. Yes, it, or, or being the gooch. <laughs> I'm the gooch. You're the gooch regardless of whether or not you're on mic. That's the thing. That's true. I've always been this way ever since, you know. I've known you at day. least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Holy sweet Jesus, I did not sleep at all last night. That was fun. Yeah, so... It's going to be a fun show. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of energy this week. Um, none of it will be directed at the review of the film, I'm sure. No, this is a, so, this is a weird... Where'd this fit in? It was, I mean, this felt like a Mate movie almost at one point. <laughs> yeah, it's a Spanish-made film, and I've heard it called a giallo, yet there's not really a murder mystery. Yeah. And I've heard it referenced as um, an asylum melodrama, which I feel is a lot more appropriate. But the, the, the exorcism angle, and it's not really a spoil because the original title that was released as by the producers decided to release it as Exorcism's Daughter to yeah. tie it in with The Exorcist. I mean, that 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 much is clear. So they wanted to have a little bit of religious iconography that they use, and they wanted to do some of the things that they're going to do with the possession as part of the story because that's what lands one of the, our main basically the main character that we really follow more uh, or less that's what lands her into this house of insane women which title sounds a little redundant if you ask my misogynistic ears yeah that's uh, it's a little 
Yeah. You pretty much could have yeah. just said House of Women and we would have got it. Um, anyway. Yeah, but, I mean, we wouldn't have known. What I mean, you're just saying two of the same thing. So if I automatically say that the joke is misogynistic, does that make it okay to make the joke? Or is no. it still bad no, that I No, we're both still very misogynistic. No, it's worse. It's worse. Because we're acknowledging you... that it's wrong, but we're going to indulge in it anyway? Yeah, you know better, but you're still doing it anyway. It's not a good look. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's like, uh, I can't plead insanity. I can't plead ignorance in the making of a misogynistic joke because I am acknowledging such a thing, which is almost as if I am going in the face of the people that it may actually offend and saying, fuck your feelings, I'm telling this joke. Yeah. That does now, make it now worse. Now you're getting it. Yeah. yeah. That does you're, make it worse. You're a bad person. <laughs> It's almost like we set this up to teach people a lesson about making jokes like that when we totally didn't. Yeah, we didn't actually, but we probably can cut that part out so people think we did. I learned something today, Matt. <laughs> and I learned something today. <laughs> wow. Anyway, back to the movie House of Women. Yes, the House of Insane Women. <laughs> right. Uh, Exorcism's daughter. Uh, so because of the possession angle, they wanted to push that because of The Exorcist. Now, this comes out the same year as another film that really pushed boundaries and messed with religious iconography and did so much more gloriously dealing with possession versus insanity, uh, mass hysteria, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's Ken Russell's The Devils, which is my second favorite movie of all time pretty much <laughs> really <laughs> yes i absolutely love it but i it, it's been mutilated all to hell i've gotten to see a 35 millimeter print of the american r-rated cut once here at the alamo draft house ages ago back when theaters were still a thing that the pandemic didn't murder yeah well of course <laughs> And I absolutely loved it. Now, The Devils deals with nuns that are all believing that they are possessed by the devil or at least are pretending to be because it gives them a modicum of power and control over their lives and also license to do what it is that they want to do. Yeah, well, of course. I'm really generalizing it. There's a lot more going on with that, but that's the focus of the story that matters for comparing it to this film because you have women in an asylum who are all supposed to be insane but we'll get into that as well and they're being mishandled and mistreated by religious people because this is a nun ran asylum <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and the doctors aren't really there to help and neither are any of the orderlies or anything like that. So there's a lot of abuse. And that's kind of like the nuns that are being exercised in the devils. There's a similarity there as well, where the guys aren't really there. They're just using this as a way to gain political power off the back of making them behave more and more as though they're possessed. So that's kind of a similar thing that we have going on with this asylum film. Uh, they're dealing with very similar themes, but uh, this film doesn't really go pushing it to the very far edge that much whereas the devils just go so far beyond that the, <laughs> the original distributor warner brothers will not allow the film to be viewed on home video in its intended form by the director wow Jesus. <laughs> that bad huh yeah uh the movie itself could only be released in britain <laughs> on on dvd over there but like the main offending stuff the really really bad stuff still had to be cut off they, they couldn't include that into the home video version and like how Warner bad was this flick <laughs> the devils there's a there's a whole we're gonna cover it someday but I, we'll talk about it more then but it's not that bad i'm just saying it's yeah it's like it's so apparently transgressive for 1971 that that happens and then this film does a lot of the same stuff but mostly gets it's released, you know, relatively uncut in the way that it's supposed to be. The version that you and I watched, which was released here in the United States, is House of Women. The, the House of Insane Women. <laughs> right, that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to keep pushing the joke, aren't you? <laughs> no matter how uncomfortable everyone gets. <laughs> We've acknowledged that I've learned something, and the fact that I'm doing it again is what makes it funny. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> this is a character. This is not me as a real person. I obviously, as a real person, don't believe this, but me as a character who wants to keep pushing a joke that I'm this bad of a person, yes. Yeah, of course. And by explaining it like this, we are now in Family Guide Fic territory, and we're going to have to cut away to a goddamn manatee. <laughs> joke yeah or a conway twitty <laughs> anyway house of insane women the cut that we watched is uh -huh. like 90 ish minutes and it's supposed to be somewhere above like an hour and 40 to an hour and 51 minutes i think is the exorcism's daughter or the the original release version of that what that cut is i don't know but the cut down version that you and i watched is 
is the American version, which is labeled as House of Insane Women, which may have a lot to do with the way the story jumps around. I'm not really sure because the editing doesn't seem to be what it is. It just seems like they're doing flashbacks without warning us they're doing flashbacks, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So when we get into that, everybody, the frustration and confusion that you're feeling trying to find out where the fuck Matt is in the story is exactly how Matt felt trying to figure out where the Dude, fuck he was in the story. This is so fucking just ridiculous. <laughs> this got so bad, Matt had texted me and asked me about it. And I went. Uh, well, I was worried like something went bad with the rip because things were so jumbled out of order. Right. And, and I like did... the clear edits in the movie were so bad that it seemed like it had to be something that we did. <laughs> so I went through and I just basically started playing the Blu ray. And I went through and said, okay, well, this is what happened at the beginning. And then that jumps to this. And then it does do this jump that you were talking about and i like i ended up calling him and kind of going through it and on the phone and i'm like okay so this is what happened so this is how it was on the blu-ray i don't know what's going on we'll have to bring it up and this is something we're gonna have to deal with yeah um, so all this jumping around the cuts and everything like that my suspicion matt is this is the chopped up version that got released in two american theaters for american audiences and it is my hope for the creators of exorcism's daughter that the film itself doesn't jump around this much and is as confusing as what we're about to bitch about. I'm hoping yeah. that it's just that the distributors over here that chopped it up and did whatever they did for over here is what made it this confusing mess that we're about to bitch about. But I wanted to give everyone the caveat that we were talking about that cut, not Exorcism's Daughter, because we clearly have not seen that version of the film. Yeah, no, we have not. <laughs> but we did it this week, and we're going to soldier on with it. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing... All the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. I got really suckered into that one. Yeah. That Woo was party. That was jamming. That was rocking out. That was having a lot of good fun, which is not anything that you are going to experience in this trailer. Exorcism is only the beginning of Exorcism's Daughter. You actually see an exorcism. Then you witness the results. When there's no place left to go, you can always go mad. Welcome to the house of insane women. The only place left to go when you're exorcism. 
exorcisms. <laughs> Exorcism's daughter. Exorcism's daughter. Okay, so welcome to the House of Insane Women, the only place you can go when you're Exorcism's daughter. I didn't I didn't watch that movie. Whatever movie that was, I didn't see it. It looked pretty fucking amazing to me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we didn't get to see that one. The home of insane women. Uh it's not the, a home, um, they're not retired, it's a house. The house. It's where the they're house housed. of insane women. The house, yeah. The first twenty minutes we start with a dude, he's wearing like like what appears to be like a military person's coat. Uh and he's checking out all the ladies of the house. He seems a little nuts himself, drinking what seems to be probably either gin or vodka or just pure mash. It could be that, too. I thought it was the bottled urine of one of the women. Dude, that's way too clear. Nobody's that hydrated there. They're not being taken care of that well. Fair enough. (laughs) Um, A new doctor shows up, meets with him, and that is our first clip. I don't need help. I follow the rules. Nobody ever made such a big thing about cleanliness. And visitors haven't protested. Uh, no, sir. Apart from the barber, no one comes to this madhouse. Well, I guess that barber has quite a while. Oh, you're wrong, Ed. Uh, he comes to shave me once in a while. Uh, my position bans it. <laughs> follow me. Right through here. Now, the next time the barber comes, let me know. I want to meet him. You can count on my cooperation, doctor. <laughs> this lock <laughs> needs repair. It's important. For me, this place would fall apart. Come in, doctor. Get out of the way. And there's one being punished. I want That's to see a her. a lot. Out of the way, I said. It's him. Immo- Good morning. Are these all of the inmates? Uh, yeah. We buried five of them last winter. And one oh, has uh, permission to go out. Just She's just had it for some time. Uh-huh. Come with me. Good morning, doctor. She tucks everybody in at night. She mends their clothes and she takes care of the little par- paralytics of Duchess. <laughs> Get out of the way, fatty. The Duchess lost her fortune and husband and all of her sons in the war. I don't have to tell you what they are, Doctor. Always holding hands and rubbing up against each other. Get out of there, you perverts. I told you you're not allowed to be together. Out! Here comes a poor nun that has to dirty your hands on them. Out of there, sister. Leave them alone, sister. Just the same. I followed the rules, and I'm paid. Frankly, Albert, the only thing I'm interested in is the casino. There's a great struggle between the monarchist and liberals. Are you a monarchist? No. Liberal. Well, that means it would be hard for us to discuss it. We'd only argue. I haven't argued in years. Just now, you have to live in the hospital. Not very pleasant, but perhaps I can help you find a place in town. No, thanks. I prefer to stay here with the inmates. Uh, these new ideas of the liberals, why not leave things as they are? Why cause waves? Good, Good morning. morning, doctor. We can't allow things to continue like this. We should instigate changes. Let's go in. I don't want you to think that I'm outdated. I know there are new techniques, the asepsia, the discovery of Pasteur and of Koch. But unfortunately, all these so-called advances haven't done away with sickness and death. Uh, In England, the insane are given shows and concerts, but their number doesn't diminish. It's not possible to let them go. With new techniques, we might achieve better results. Believe me, there's no difference between this place and the best clinics abroad. I don't agree. Brewer tried some experiments with an hysterical melancholic. The patient presented all the symptoms of that malady. Paralysis, convulsions, inhibitions. There were these strange confessions, apparently unrelated, concealing something that would make them relate. I suspect that whatever that was was the secret of her madness. Uh, You sound like a novelist. The tranquility of this place will encourage you to continue along these lines. I'm a doctor, sir. Let me tell you the end. Do I have any choice? You liberals are great talkers. Brewer hypnotizes the patient. He does it regularly, every day. In the state of hypnosis, the patient loses all inhibitions and reveals everything hidden in the subconscious. Sounds like he practices witchcraft rather than medicine. You recall Frandy's Mesmer was expelled from Vienna on those experiments. That was different. In the case of Brewer, the lady regained her mind. I intend to try a similar treatment, if you'll allow me. Are you ill? No. No, I was thinking about the administration. 
You see, they're simple people, and I was afraid they... I quite understand. Appearances count far more than human beings. Look, I'm a lot older than you. If I'd have been born 50 years later, well, maybe I'd think differently. But the years have toned me down considerably. In time, I think you'll find they'll do the same to you. From this moment on, you're responsible for the asylum. I'm sorry you've got such liberal ideas. I would like the board to understand you. If you need my help, don't fail to call. Thank you, Doc. How fucking depressing is it that the fact that he has liberal ideas makes him not an ideal candidate, and it's such a bad thing, and it's how many fucking years later, and that hasn't really changed? Yeah, right? To, you know, we're trying to treat people, and yeah, none of that has changed at all. <laughs> yeah, the snake pit is no longer just a single building that houses patients. The snake pit is the state these days. Yeah, exactly. So the new doctor checks on some of the sicker ladies. Then we cut to when the new doctor first got to town. See, this is one of the weird cuts you get in this damn movie. Because, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so the doctor's already been to the asylum, but now he's arriving at the town. The only thing I can figure is he went to the asylum first to get orientation, and now he's arriving at the town? Yeah. No, that's not the case at no. all. It's completely no, out they... of order. No fucking reason. They don't just flash back. It's just all of a sudden now he's arriving at the town after touring the asylum in this. Yeah. Yeah, right? Uh, it's just, oh, Jesus Christ. Can this get any more annoying? All right, so uh, the old doctor tells him he should leave because this place will take a piece of him with him. So apparently he's trying to warn him off. Yeah, then the perv leave, guy, leave this evil place. He's the harbinger, yeah. you know. And then the, the perv guy is like, gives him a tour. And we've seen nuns are dunking ladies in, in water. I don't know if they're giving them a bath or if this is like, look, we'll help you. <laughs> By torturing you. <laughs> it's essentially hydrotherapy by waterboard, Whatever. I guess, proxy, is kind yeah. of what they're doing. Whatever it is, it's it's not cool. Uh, yes, it's very disappointing. Yeah. Um, so uh, then we cut to the guys, the, the perv guys eating a meal. Uh, that scene almost served no purpose. No idea what was in there other than to gross anybody out from eating ever again. Padding too. Um, yeah. Uh, we cut to uh, uh, a uh, ladies kind of running around and the perv guy is chasing them because he's a perv dude. Uh, uh, head back. We cut back to the perv guy giving the new doctor a tour again. So uh, uh, again, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. The, the, every, nothing makes any sense. That's what happened uh, on the Blu-ray, too. So either yeah. if it is something that's wrong with the authoring, then it's a bad Blu-ray, which considering this is a code red disc is probably possible. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on around here. <laughs> this is just what we saw. So if it's not yep. the movie, then I guess we'll watch the actual movie if somebody has a better print. But this is what happened to us. Yeah, this is this is the fun that we got to deal with for this. So <laughs> more Matt than me, because I'm like, <laughs> have fun trying to f tell them what's happening here. I know, right? I have to do the notes. So <laughs> let me however, that's going to have to go. So. Uh, they find a lady hiding, and the doc and Perv, they calm her down. Her name's apparently uh, Tanya. They calm her down with some milk, and uh, she says she wants the new doctor dead, but doesn't know why. She doesn't trust him. She doesn't know why, and that pretty much ends our first 20 minutes. This is very much just a straight drama setup. It's just telling us a straight story of life in an asylum. What makes yeah. this really be more of a horrific aspect to it is the very brutal and frank way that it shows you how asylums probably were in this time frame if, yeah. if not worse or Ugh. could possibly have been if not worse yeah uh, i think the saving grace for this film for a lot of folks that are going to watch this is the fact that they never really go that depraved with what they show they don't you. and they that's hint, what i was kind of nervous about they, waiting to see they hint at the more violent, depraved things that could possibly hip happen, but they never really go there. It really sticks with, and I'm going to say the word again, a more melodrama or dramatic piece that's just a tale of these people and their lives. So the real horror, the real dark aspects of this, that you would kind of think that this was a horror film, given the title <laughs> Exorcism's Daughter and then uh, House of Insane Women, like the kind of thing that that, that title sort of, in, I don't know, makes you think think it could be quite this way it's there but only as a i hate to say it this way like tapestry with which to tell the story and paint on 
you know, just to tell you the story, to get this across. Yeah. You know, this could have been the house of women in ill repute. You know, it could have been a, a, a prostitute house and they could tell the same story. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. It, I mean, no, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. But the way that they do it, the way that they deal with this, the insane asylums of this day, which really is a fucking snake pit. The only thing we were missing was the guards didn't have cages on their heads <laughs> to keep their right. faces from being clawed up. Uh, but the, the abuse of the patients, the everything that we're actually seeing here, I mean, this is the exact same stuff that was in American Horror Stories uh, season of Asylum. They just went or depraved because they could get away with it and they felt like it. I feel that this is a choice on the filmmaker's part to pull back. Yeah. Or at least I didn't see that. Or at least what I'm seeing here now, some of the more depraved stuff, maybe that got cut out. Who knows? I have no idea. But this film, as I'm seeing it here, it feels like it's a very serious choice on the part of someone who delivered this final cut to make it so that you focus in more on the actual story of what's happening and the tragedy of our characters here and that's where you get your entertainment slash horror or whatever it is that you're looking for when you watch a film called house of insane women or exorcism's daughter right yeah <laughs> yeah but like i don't what i think the big confusing part that a lot of audiences clearly had especially like you know when you name your film exorcism's daughter and you come in in the first 20 minutes is this yeah you're confused it's like, yeah what the hell <laughs> yeah and the way it jumps around in the cut you're even more more confused if this is the version of the film that you see oh yeah definitely yeah it, I, like i didn't well i thought i was in for some sort of just by this title the house of insane women i thought i was definitely in for a uh, exploitation film yeah you were expecting one of those women in prison flicks and i'm throwing something Kinda. like that at yeah. you. yeah 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 that's what i was expecting when i bought it based on the title alone dude <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> no, i actually there's still parts of this film that i rather liked we just aren't there yet because i'm disoriented and confused uh luckily that does kind of stabilize a little bit more towards the end of the film it's just here at the beginning where it's the most jumping around and you're not sure why yeah yeah but i get it yeah just a a, a weird movie i can already tell in the first 20 minutes i was going to be in a lot of trouble <laughs> <laughs> right it was within this 20 minutes that the phone had that conversation of hey this is jumping around a lot yeah yeah, yeah. so we kind of <laughs> once I reassured you that yes this is what I was seeing as well then yeah. we moved on from there Good times. So we start with the new 20 minutes. Um, Tanya, she gets her milk with some sugar in it, but she's way too paranoid. Um, and she wants to paint and says she has enemies. And she's kind of just jumping around something you would get from uh, uh, someone who is disturbed like this. All right. And then we have the doc and uh, he's now starting some patient treatments, such as he's letting them walk around like uh, different areas. And he's starting to get shit for it because that's not part of the rules. So, uh, uh, and it's the perv who's telling them about all the rules. It, pretty much it was just locking these people down. Yeah, keep them all in the same like 10 by 12 cage that they sleep yeah. in a much smaller version of with beds that's like, what, six by five? Just enough yeah. to have like two foot between beds in like a dormitory style mm -hmm. open area that they can always view them with the cage. Exactly. So, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's snake not, pit. Not it's cool. A, it's a total fucking snake pit and the rules are you never take them out of the cage. Yeah. Like I said, the perv is being a real dick. To everybody during these walks. So it's like um, he, he, he could maybe just possibly settle the fuck down. Yeah, um, this guy, I really wanted something horrible to happen to him the entire time I'm watching the movie. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. He causes me physical pain every moment he's on screen. Yeah, he's a giant, giant piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, the and horror that, comes from having to deal with this asshole. Yeah, he he deserves nothing but our contempt. <laughs> he's a prick. Um, he's, he is definitely a prick. Um, then uh, the... Uh, then one of the ladies who's walking with them, uh, she passes out on this walk. Um, uh, at the uh, dinner, the perv starts giving more food to a certain lady who you can tell he wants to have probably relations with. But, you know, for as we all know, that's sexual assault. So, yeah, it's fucking gross. That's thankfully they just hint at things like this. They let you know that sort of those types of attitudes are prevalent in places like this and it yeah. will go unreported in places like this they they bring it to your attention but thankfully they don't go into the realm of exploitation with it which is a yeah. breath of fresh air for this kind of film a little bit yes it is and so you don't get to you don't have to see that all together um 
Uh, the uh, then we cut to the perv and the doc, doc kind of have a conversation, and the pervs are uh, just getting hammered, drunk, and talking about his own mortality and all that shit. And the doc is almost trying to treat him as well, kind of like, hey, uh, you know, what what the hell is wrong with you, big guy? So then the uh, perv takes the lady to the bedroom, and they kind of get it on and does whatever they want. Then we come back to Tanya, and she's painting her room completely white, going crazy. Um. Uh, she says she won't talk to the doctor because she thinks he's a spy. Um, then we cut to the perv getting a shave. He's talking to the barber about the new doc. The barber keeps cutting the fucking perv's face uh, while shaving him. And then uh, the barber then pays to get a shot at some of the ladies. And he does. He gets like three of the ladies. All the while, the perv shames two ladies who are going at it in a bathtub and showers them down with like fucking probably scalding hot water. So Jesus. The guy that paid for the ladies, they actually wanted a man anyway, right? Like, they all were... It seemed that way, because they they attacked him. They tackled him. Right. So they wanted it. They they went after him. I think so. What the the barber really paid for is for the guard just to let them do that, right? Yeah, what he paid for was access to the girls so that they could have them. (laughs) Right. I think that's pretty much what it was. And then the scalding hot water thing, this is where you get the, the, the hint at much worse torture and things, because well it looks like it hurts at the same time it seems like a game that these two play yeah you know it's kind of hard to tell and that makes you uncomfortable it makes you wonder like should i have even thought that right there <laughs> right no shit <laughs> but like you did see that too right and you felt the same thing where you're like wait should i have it- thought that <laughs> yeah so am i supposed to be thinking this right now fuck i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's dark movie <laughs> yeah fucking movie um Yeah, and the barber gets two ladies, and they they fuck him. So, and then the next day, it's time for some haircuts, and the ladies, they all hate the barber, and they hate their haircuts. They all get super short haircuts. Yeah, And the the doctor says it's because it's for hygiene issues. Right. So, the main doctor is the one that is ordering this, and I'm glad that the barber did what he got to do last night, because those ladies would not have treated him very well this (laughs) night after cutting off all their hair. That's that's very true. Uh... (laughs) Like, I don't, morally speaking, that is clearly wrong because he's taking advantage of mentally ill women. Yeah. But like, as far as the things that are awful, the fucking, the guard is so much worse. And like, I don't, I'm just, I don't know. Like, I feel like if he would have paid for access to the ladies the next day, we would have had a much more brutal response and they would have started doing horrible things to him. And I think if this was trying to be more of an exploitative film, they would have done that. Yeah, I think so. Like, if this was a true exploit film well if if, yeah well the type of film that we're used to for this type of thing you know (laughs) yeah this type of genre for something that's titled say exorcism's daughter you would expect it to start getting more intense and violent and you know or at least have some kind of hint at supernatural evil which we've had none of yet so far we've had just melodrama yeah that's true uh you're not wrong at all. One of the patients gets a razor. No one sees her. And then everyone starts going ape shit when Tanya starts getting her hair cut. Like, everyone's running around. They're crying. They're going crazy. Um, The, the doc, again, he's commenting how it's for eye hygiene, but everyone's hating it. And the, the perv is like, I told you they'd hate it. Don't know why you kept, you know, needed to do this. Um. Tanya then yells and gives the doc some shit, and that ends that 20 minutes. Again, all this is just straight up melodrama of things that's going on with their lives. Yeah. What this reminded me of is Orange is the New Black, only more set in an asylum snake pit of this era. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's very much like an Orange is the New Black. You're exactly right. Huh. Look at you, Court, being right. Shut up. <laughs> and when I say melodrama, I'm not trying to... You're not trying dis- to be rude. No, I'm not trying to disparage it. That's just the type of storytelling that we are currently viewing. Whether or not that works for me is not important or appropriate at this time. What is, is this is just what we're currently watching. And I can see at this point again at this next juncture 
of 20 minutes, an audience that goes to see a film called Exorcism's Daughter yeah. is going to be clearly confused as to what all of this is going to have to do with an exorcism or a daughter of one. Yeah, they're all going to start to wonder, you know, hey, where's our exorcism at? We paid money to see a good exorcism and uh, it ain't here. <gasps> now, on the other hand, if we're going to contrast that, the American title of House of Insane Women, I'm still kind of seeing that. Yeah. That's what's yeah. there. This is the, what we're watching the day of the life of. And while there is some tension and things like that, I don't really think that this is a horror film. You know, I think it is a, no, very much a I drama or even melodrama. It is. Yeah. It's very much a drama. You're right. This is not a horror film at all. So Still at this point, I mean, it may get a little bit more to where it could possibly be argued that it's more horror, but I'm starting to get a little like a more of a too little too late. This is just a past trauma, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Something like that. Um, well, we start the next 20 minutes and uh, Tanya uh, talks some, uh, uh, Tanya goes a little crazy and talks some shit. And that's actually our next clip. Let her be. Like a human being, he said. No one can be deprived of his freedom unless he's sentenced by a tribune. It isn't fair. And it's very cruel. If we had money, money to give Fuso, everything would be easy. We'd be free. We are condemned without being judged by tribunal. I see in my white walls the cruel and ruthless crush those who are weak. Oh, they have much money, those ruthless ones, and therefore power. We must end their cruel treatment of us. We must do away with the tyrants who deprive us of our freedom. They have no right to keep us locked up in here. I heard Dr. Alba. There won't be any more freezing baths now. The time of the straitjacket is over, he said. Now you'll be treated as a human being. Human being. Human being. Human being. Human being. So they're pretty excited that maybe the new doctor is going to be treating them better. Uh, they're just excited to be treated like human beings. Yeah. How sad is that? They're so excited about it, Matt, that they are, in fact, cheering to the point where that's where the clip ends and fades out on us. Yeah. For a good while, they cheered human being, like annoyingly so, before uh -huh. you even faded it out. Yeah. But the movie did it even longer. Yeah. Really drove yeah, that they... point home and really made me feel awful for these poor women that they were not being treated like human beings. And then I recall that it really hasn't gotten that much fucking better for them no nope not at all so then a, a pillow fight ensues because you know everyone's gonna have a good pillow fight when they get treated like a human being now yeah i don't i don't fucking know like the film was going places where i'm like all right and then i'm like uh, okay i don't know if this is when we pillow fight but i'm gonna watch it thank you yeah thanks movie um i feel uncomfortable about this now <laughs> But thank you. Yeah, and then the lady who she stole the razor, she starts threatening everyone and herself with the razor. The doc tries to calm her down, but she falls backwards and falls off a ledge to her death. So then, you know, all the happy times are over. Now. She's so afraid of the doctor approaching her and what might happen with the razor that she pushes herself backwards over the railing. Yeah. Like she's leaning back so hard and she's trying to get away from him so quickly or, or so dramatically that she doubles over backwards. This was kind of the only sequence where the drama was working for me with this yeah. particular character. And I think I, I want to credit the actual actress performing the physical part of the role and then whoever ended up doing the audio dub, if it's the same actress, this was excellent work. If not, both of them worked together rather well to really make this part really kind of get driven home to me. And there's yeah. there's portions of this where they do the things like with the human beings human beings and then they undercut it with the pillow fighting and then they come back to the pillow fighting triggers her to do this and then she falls backwards to her death rather than deal with like what's gonna happen next <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> with the choices that she's made, like, I, I guess is what she ended up doing, like trying to back away from everything. And, you know, that that kind of occurs and it, it, it it's this very dramatic moving moment. But I'm also like waiting for the next wave of pillow fighting to break out or something along those lines because I just don't know what to expect from this movie. I am so fucking confused and dumbfounded by this point, Matt, that I'm starting to have Horror House on Highway 5 I know, right? creeping through my head where I'm like, are they doing this on purpose? Am I supposed yeah. to start feeling like I'm crazy from watching this? Are, are, are we getting punked? <laughs> right, right, right. Like, what's going on here? Is, is this some kind of, like, secret curse that happens to podcasters where a movie like this is played, and then you then have to explain what happened in the plot? <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Wait, that's exactly what happened. That is that is, uh, that is exactly what's going on right now. Uh, <laughs> when you're a podcaster, you are cursed to explain a plot of what happened in a movie. Yeah, yeah, when you have everyone's no going to know now. <laughs> it's a curse. All sometimes, your poor shit. Sometimes it's a gift. <laughs> Usually it's a curse. Uh, so uh, the perv blames the doctor. And then we cut to Tanya's walking around by herself in the rain. Uh, she kind of is just enjoying herself, but the doc takes her in. She's just drenched and cold. He dries her off, and he determines that she will be a good candidate for hypnosis. Um, the doc gets a visit from uh, the boss, and he says he's not doing all that well, and he better see the main lady of the town. Like, she's really rich and influential, and she can get the town behind him. Because right now, the town is not very behind the new doctor. Uh, it's because he's too uh, liberal, Matt. His ideas yeah. are too radical. He feels that people should be treated like human beings. Yeah, well, how dare he? I just want to point that out. That's where he's coming from. He thinks that yeah. these women in this asylum should be treated like human beings. And that is yeah. what's making him unpopular in this town. And Christ, times have not changed. No, not even a little bit. Um, So uh, he does visit the lady and he really wins her over. Uh, You can tell she's very into him. And and uh, very much, uh, she she wants uh, she wants to ride the uh, the new doctor there. Um, and uh, you know, she pretty uh, much says that he can work out whatever frustrations and darkness are in his mind all out on her. She's yeah. more than willing to quote unquote take it for the team. Yeah, and she will help him with his image in the town because the town will know that he is working with her quote unquote, and everything will be okay, and he will be able to practice how he wants to in the asylum so she's basically saying you fuck her she'll make this all go away pretty much yeah uh Flip. and uh, <laughs> uh that, that sexual harassment uh, so um, oh she well, gets downright rapey with it in a couple of parts oh yeah well he makes a presentation to a lot of the town elders yeah, and her and right. that's our next clip there are various ways of getting it to reveal itself by force torture and so forth but the best one is kindness toward and close observation of the patient. Man knows much more about himself than he's willing to confess. In an artificially imposed hypnotic state of mind, the patient can be made to divulge much more than he would ordinarily. Sister, please bring the patient. Today, hypnosis is the most efficient method to peer into the past of schizophrenic individuals. How can I explain it? It's the same with justice in the more humanitarian societies. They, too, reject torture as a method of interrogation. A little money, a little money, a little money, a little money, a little money. <laughs> this patient is a manic depressive. Although she is far from cured, I have succeeded in preventing her from starving herself to death. And I must point out, the methods I've used are not in any way related to alchemy. Unfortunately, this science needs more time. But facts speak better than theories. I mean now to demonstrate the experience of other physicians. You're about to see a session of hypnosis. There's no danger. Don't be concerned. I have experience too. Will this hypnosis, doctor, affect a cure? Only knowing the patient's problems can we begin to treat their ills, gentlemen. Well, that's all very well, but anyone can see that these experiments are related to witchcraft, and witchcraft is contrary to the law of God. I study science, sir, not sorcery. Are you by any chance a Catholic? I'm a searcher after justice and truth. I think that's the way to God. 
Explain that to us, Doctor. Everything that exists in the world is holy. Life, death. You might say that it's all magic. Oh, it is, is it? Please tell us why you've not attended Mass since you've been here. I will tell you this. I don't consider my life to be in the hands of men or priests. I worship God in my own way. But faith is absolutely necessary. Faith is the light that leads us out of darkness. I bid good day to this physician. <laughs> you may all leave now. <laughs> Witchcraft. <laughs> Move along, move along, move, move. No, don't think we're uncivilized. Here in our small town, we're not used to. I know. It has to do with morals. The most important things, appearances. They're not really interested in what we do. We appear immoral, and that's that. an evil of our time. Scientific discovery is discouraged. I don't get the full import of your words. It's so quiet here. Say the citizens commence talking about it, they'll begin to think you perform miracles. The administration board thinks only in their own interests. Why sound so pessimistic? You're at liberty to pursue your work, but why pursue new methods? These wretched creatures are lost, and there's no salvation. I don't agree. I'll continue to try new ways. And you won't discourage me. I don't care to discuss these ideas. It's forbidden for them to enter this area. This patient lives here. The board does not agree with your ideas. I am trying to help you, believe me. It would be better for you if you found lodgings in town. You're a single man and people do gossip. I'm sure you understand. I mean, I... I would like you to continue in charge of this asylum. I don't want to give in to the others. Ugh. Yeah. Trying to talk science to a priest, that's never going to go well for you. <laughs> yeah. That that whole conversation, the whole clip was just extremely frustrating. Yes. Because, you know, it's still being had to this day. I know, like, the fact that nothing has changed and this is supposed to take place in, like, you know, ye merry old fuckland yeah. <laughs> of way back when, when times weren't better. <laughs> and it's just the exact same shit we're dealing with now, only there's more guns. Yeah, because, you know, gotta have them all them guns <laughs> and my freedoms. <sighs> it's just never yeah. gonna get better. Fuck this. Nope. Fuck it. It's all done. Nuke it. Let's start all over, man. All right, so the doc doctor, Tanya's kind of following the the lady and the doctor as they talk all about this. And uh, so she, um, and so the doctor goes to check on her, and they have a little bit of a walk. And Tanya asks the doc if they can go on a trip, and that ends that 20 minutes. So really that 20 minutes displays this town's inability. It shouldn't house a fucking uh, asylum for anyone. Um, if, if they can't handle it, then I don't know you know, what the fuck they're even thinking about doing. Uh, it's redonk. Right. And I, no one should love them. And at some point in this 20 minutes, we're led to believe that a love story was developing between the doc and this main character. Yeah, Tanya. Yeah. yeah. And like, then all of a sudden, we're revealed that there actually is. So what the townspeople were somewhat accusing him of doing while at the same time disliking him for being liberal. <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. is really this weird bizarre twist that they decide to do all of a sudden where like yeah it turns out actually they are in love but we haven't really seen that we've just been told that that was kind of happening and now boom it did yeah that's the only other kind of jump story editing wise where i'm like wait what yeah yeah and it's weird because yeah the 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 new doc is not as um clean we don't know it yet he's just still showing concern but yeah she starts it starts getting weird <laughs> right uh, right but like now but but they they talk about it and the 
the town, the, 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 the lady that was trying to extort the doctor for sex earlier when he seemed like he was innocent and doing all the right things for these women, you know, kind of implied that the town people think that he's fooling around with the women. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, or or that his methods are also uh, in sorcery and not in tune with the Catholic Church. That's another thing they have a problem with. Right. And that kind of shit, I, I get where, you know, that where we're like, we're on the dock side. But like one of the things she does specifically call him out for, though, is that they feel like he's getting too yeah. close with the women at one of the points in time. But it's before we actually see any of the love story developing. So did she start it as a rumor and then he's like, fuck it, I might as well just go ahead and do it? Or, I think he, or did they jump around in the editing on us again? I, I mean, maybe they jumped. I think he just got, he he fell crazy himself. Okay, so it started out as a rumor and then like, he confirmed to make it true anyway. Yeah, I think he just I think he just lost his, his own mind in this place that old doctors were Warning, wearing very true. All right, I'll, I'll accept that explanation. But it yeah. is confusing how they do it because they just it's, jump in and they're already in yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole movie's uh, just confusing. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like we're missing footage is what I'm getting at. I feel like we're footage. missing. Oh, yeah, I feel like that yeah. too. Yeah, like we're, we're we're missing like a part of the story. Like some of that moment may have been cut out from that longer cut that I've, I'm pretty sure exists. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I definitely agree with you. <laughs> so... Um, but anyway, the, the next 20 minutes, they, Doc gives Tanya a trip. They head out and about. Um, they, uh, the, she, Tanya runs into a church as the church bells are going off and she, doctor has to stop her from jumping pretty much. So that's not exactly a good way to end that. Uh, end your day trip, I guess. So watch it. They go back to the hospital or the clinic and the, the doc, uh, gets her, uh, a nice new dress. And this is where it starts to get a little weird. Why, why, why are you getting her a dress, man? That you're supposed to be your doctor. Can you, can you just be appropriate, please? <laughs> yeah. So whatever goodwill you may have had built up with the doctor earlier immediately gets flushed down the toilet. And this is another scenario where, although not as immediately as the women cheering for being treated like human beings and then immediately going into a pillow fight, this is kind of the yeah. same where like you think the doctor's actually a good guy. He's here to help these women. He's sort of built up at the start of this movie as like, a good guy trying to help them out and now he's buying a patient address and now things are starting to feel like oh fuck this doctor just fucking built us up and buttered us up and now we're gonna have to watch something horrible happen yeah exactly <laughs> he, uh, he, I'll, he really... I'll, I'll give the film this. It does do those sort of like uh, dramatic, you know, turn to the camera and go <gasps> moments. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it does those oh, yeah. well. And it this, this was working for me. It's just not the movie I thought I was going to get with a title like House of Insane Women. And that's on me for putting expectations I, on I a title. I would have gotten more into this movie if it weren't for the expectations and then the way everything just cut, you know, apart all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I am just glad glad that I didn't watch this initially under the title of Exorcism's Daughter because I would have been even more confused. Yeah, right? Jeez. Yeah, you would have been like, what the hell's going on around here? Right. <laughs> At least with House of Insane Women, I'm like, okay, yeah, well, that's where we are. Yeah, right? All right. Well, yeah, this is this is what we do. This is who we are. <laughs> We're following a doctor and patients in a House of Insane Women. Cool. All right. All right. Every, everyone's going to be okay. She starts uh, changing, and she's like changing in front of the doc and everyone, and she kind of realizes Oh, I'm I'm kind of changing in front of everyone, and she leaves. Um, the doctor walks around, and he finds perv guy perving on the ladies, and he doesn't stop it. And then that bothers me, like, yeah, a lot. Yeah, again, we thought this doctor was going to be doing something different and have these women treated like human beings, but no, he just lets this go. He literally looks at it, just kind of sighs a little bit, and then walks off. Yeah, uh, that bothered me a lot. Yeah, um, he's no longer going to be considered a good character after this. This seals the. Fucking deal. We know for sure he's had full heel turn, Matt. Yeah, yeah. And um again, the uh the doctor tries to show concern for the old perv. He's like, hey, you're not really living your best life, bro. Do, do you want some help? And he shows some concern to him, but the perv doesn't care and he just walks away from him. So the doc then goes back to Tanya and hypnotizes her. And it's a very short, but it's our final clip. The dolls without heads. Afraid of the dolls? Tell me why. No, not afraid of the dolls. Are you afraid of the dolls without heads? Yes. Are there other things that frighten you or that 
fill you with despair? The shoes of the dead. The shoes of the dead? Yes. What else frightens you, Tanya? Flowers. Flowers. And no. Did you say flowers? Flowers of rags falling over a woman without breasts. I'm not a little girl. I don't feed at my mother's breast. Flowers of rags falling over a woman without breasts. Okay, movie, where are we going with this? Right? This is all getting really weird. Well, the doc gets then another visit from the head towns lady, and she wants him to live with her as the town is starting to talk about him. So she's starting to, you know, bring it up again that, hey, listen, the entire town's talking about you. You you freak. So what's your problem? And this is like the like, second time where she's like really trying to be like, look, this is your last yeah. chance to get with me in order for you to stay safe. Right. Yeah. Like that's also a clip. But uh, <laughs> that's basically what she's telling him. Like if he doesn't go live with her and give her the goods, like she's going to allow the town to basically cook him alive. Well, and, and he says, you know, he, he won't go through with that. He won't do nothing. And he's going to stay where he's at. Uh, and she's like, oh, well, that's fine then. Um I'm just going to, you know, I then you're done. She pretty much tells him he's done in this town. So, um, anyway, he makes this big doll, and he's trying to stage something for Tanya. Um, he meets up with her, and she wants to kiss him, and he stops her. And he says they have to show restraint and keep this all professional because uh, everyone's uh, kind of, like, looking at him. You know, the whole town's paying attention to him. So, um, yeah, so... So he's finally, you know, he is still trying to maintain this. So as best he can, but Tanya now trusts him and, and, you know, wants to get on some of that, but <laughs> whatever. When he, uh, denies her, our, uh, um, after he denies her, the, the duck, uh, goes and talks to the perv and he's whittling like a stick. And he says, this is my cure. This is how I cure myself. And it's just it's fucking weird. <laughs> it's weird. How does he have a job here? It's all weird. It's not right. Uh, anyway, the doc goes to visit the boss lady again, as she's using the excuse she's sick, and she needs to see him, which is all sorts of, you know, horse shit. Uh, so, then, um, uh, he, he, she says she just wants him. She wants him to be there. Well, he leaves, and that's when she really threatens him. She's like, you're fucking done. You better hope, I don't know, man, he better have another job lined up, according to her, because it's no good. Sorry, this is where she gets real rapey. <laughs> yeah, like she, it keeps ratcheting up with her. Like it just gets worse and worse to where she's just really going after him. And it's an interesting role reversal for a film like this because you would totally not expect to be, see, be... yeah, to, to have a female be the sexual aggressor and just basically abuser at this point in a film. Well, like it's this. like he, yeah, it's usually the female doctor trying to turn a place around and some gross male dude although we do have this the perv guy so at least that part's taken right it still delivers on that but like i just really wanted to comment that it's interesting especially in 1971 that they're doing a role yeah, reversal a, like that it's a real head it's kind of ahead of its time it's it's refreshing yeah as frustrating as this movie is there's equal parts ideas in this that i recognize and really enjoy and that makes it even more frustrating yeah right um so, uh, the, the perv once again gets a shave. Okay. Don't know why we, it, that, that scene really didn't do anything for this other than he gets cut again by the barber on his face. Um, then Tanya, uh, she's, she hangs up her new dress and then proceeds to like beat it and like it's hanging there. And then she, um, the perv comes up to her and she kind of gets playful and she kisses him and then she bites him, which really kind of pisses him off. And, uh, that's not good. Um, but it's good that he gets, you know, something like that. So, you know, fuck you. <laughs> It's, it's it's good he gets treated to this kind of uh, ass kickery or at least embarrassment. She runs away, he chases, and this is going to now lead us into our final twenty minutes. Yeah, let's just roll through. I mean, it's very straightforward after the whole demon possession shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we head into the final 20 and he catches up to her. He locks her into the showers. Like, cause there, you know, there, obviously there's a, a cage in front of the cowers cause there's showers. And then he turns them all on and then he hoses her down while talking shit at her. 
Um, he, and then we cut to her. She's in her room, and the doc checks on her. He hypnotizes her again, and she has visions of her mom probably having epileptic seizures or an episode of her own, which is probably why Tanya has it, probably hereditary. But no one knows it in this town while she's a little girl, and everyone's just trying to pray it away from her, and her mom dies in front of her. So we see this is kind of Tanya's main drama. So that's too bad. Um, yeah, it's... So you see what her her main trauma is, but also she probably has some sort of disease that she kind of got from her mom. I believe that her mom suffered from some type of possible chemical imbalance or um, something that was hereditary, yes, that caused visual hallucinations, auditory hallucinations, um, maybe like schizophrenia or something along those lines where it was a loss of reality. And her mother was misdiagnosed and exercised what appears to be to death and the daughter's trauma is from witnessing that and on top of that i believe yes she may have inherited something like that that may be like a hand like a genetic trait in the family or a family trait you know something along those lines that is absolutely possible Uh, this is such a weird shocking moment but like if you were trying to sell this as a giallo is the giallo then the mystery of what happened to her because i don't think that's how giallo works i think it has to be a murder mystery like who done it yeah so i don't know if this is giallo well, that. like I said, I saw it one place where someone compared it to that, and I'm just going to keep harping on them and giving them shit for it. There you go. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, the drama really kind of comes to a head here, and this is where you could arguably kind of see the elements of horror, because it turns out mental illness and the mistreatment of the mentally ill, that's your horror story. That's it's really holding up a mirror to society, right? That's kind of what yeah. they're trying to do with this. And it, it works. Like, I definitely feel the horror there but the the rest of it is very much still drama based very much still down to earth relatively reality based and you don't you don't buy that this exorcism flashback that we get is in any way shape or form a real exorcism right no yeah it's not it's uh or at least there's there's rough shape and and her mother w- was also in rough shape, and that's just what happened. Right. Her mother was mentally ill, and the treatment was an exorcism. So while they may have believed they were performing an actual exorcism, and while the faith may have been there that the priests were really doing what they should be doing, reality is they were performing an exorcism on a mentally ill person. Yeah. I, I believe that's what the film was trying to show us as well. That's why I wanted to make sure I made that clear. Um, so there's definitely no supernatural elements to really call this horror. There just happens to be this moment of storytelling that the producers glom on to then automatically call it Exorcism's Daughter. Yeah, exactly. Well, Uh, Euro um, producers, man, they just, whatever (laughs) they'll do to try and sell that shit. Whatever they're going to take. Um, but, uh, so she wakes up from her hypnosis holding the doll that the doctor had made. Um, with, um, with this breakthrough, the doctor says, we'll have a nice dinner because this is a pretty big breakthrough for Tanya. It, she discovered a lot of what her problems are. So, uh, with, you know, all this shit, <laughs> you know, all her, all her life issues right now. She saw her so. mother be exercised to death. It's left a yeah. mark on her. Well, the boss lady shows up and the doctor tells her to leave or the main towns lady. She shows back up, but the doc's like, get the fuck out of here. You know, we don't want you here. Um, and, uh, so she's like, whatever, fine, I'll leave. And then the older doctor, he comes by and he tells the younger new doctor that he's done, that he's pissed off too many people. There's no way. So then the doc says, fuck this. And he takes all the girls out on the town and they start yelling at all the town folks. So, I mean, they are caught in a fucking scene. So now he's, he's fucking as- Charlie Manson and shit. Yeah. Uh, he he ends up back into the room uh, with um, the, at the hospital with uh, Tanya. Uh, they kind of kiss and they kind of cuddle there. He's he doesn't know what he's gonna do. He gets escorted out of town. Tanya is begging to say goodbye, but old Perfev says no, and that they're gonna go back to the way things used to be with all the important rules. All this as everyone starts crying. It's horrible. All sads. No freedom. Roll credits. Jesus. I mean, what a fucking (laughs) Jesus. I am just bummed out. 
at the end of this thing. Yeah, it's a downer Bum of a movie. Yeah, fucking er, dude. Yeah, it's really just a downer of a fucking movie. Um, but it really does kind of make you think. It's got a lot of really interesting ideas, and I hope that somewhere out there, there's a more coherent fucking edit of this than what we watched. Yeah, right. Off of this Blu-ray, which the mystery is: was it code red? Because it very well fucking could have been. Was it the the American cut that that chopped it up like this and made it all discordant and mm-hmm. hard to follow? Or was it, in fact, this is how the film was released and this is the full version of it? That's the question that I put out to you, gentle listener. If you know the answer to that question, let us know because we are confused. <laughs> I mean, I, I am heavily confused. What I what I could follow in this, I did really like. I liked the drama. I liked the story that they were telling and even the sort of like doomed love story that was developing. I mean, that also kind of kept me uh, somewhat entertained and into what they were trying to show me like i, I was yeah. kind of following along and, and liking it but like the way that it jumped around in the storytelling i did find very confusing because they didn't even bother to say like earlier that day or, or whatever yeah. reason and there's no reason for it other than just that's where it fit <laughs> exactly no you're very right like, like it is well, massively confusing yeah like why i don't understand like you completely undercut all of the goodwill that you had built up in the first couple of minutes that were being shown to then cut to him arriving in the town and being shown around again and like not understanding why. <laughs> Give me some kind of an explanation, even if it's overdubbed dialogue. Yeah, right. Oh, look, it's the new doctor. He's finally come down to the town from the asylum. There. (laughs) Yeah. It's covered. There you go. That would would make sense. (laughs) So, yeah, it's frustrating, but the parts of it that are good are are quite good, right? uh, Yeah, and it really, but it is a melancholy movie. So don't, don't, don't expect to walk away from this one, like, in a good mood. I mean, I still was. I kind of knew this is where it was going, and I didn't really, I didn't really get into the love story or care about about the characters that much i just yeah, was you're the devil so <laughs> thank you you have no you have no human feelings i'm aware of you know this is going out on easter so you calling me the devil just made my day yeah probably yeah that's true <laughs> I didn't think of that. God you know, damn me. Also, without even planning it, I once again have an Easter release with movie that contains blasphemy. And, yes, right. And an indictment of religion in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, something. Yeah, man. You're not wrong. <laughs> cool. All right. So I'm kind of happy we cool. did cover this. All right. Yeah. No, I I didn't really get that bummed out. I kind of saw where this was going. I knew this was going to happen with the story because we really did have melodrama. So we knew it was going to have a sad ending because that's, you know, that's what these kinds of films are for, there for. They're, they make you feel really, really horrible and yeah. sad. So you appreciate how wonderful your life is. <laughs> yeah, well, and I do. God damn it. <laughs> right. That's that's what the movie's there for. Uh, yeah. other, otherwise, like if that if that sort of thing is your bag, you'll probably enjoy it even more than what I did. Um, I was just trying to enjoy it on an academic level because this is a movie that I assigned for us this week. Yeah. Well, I. you know what? If it weren't for all the cuts, it's not a bad story. It's just a little depressing. <laughs> and I was totally fine with the de- depressing aspect of it. It actually made me enjoy it a little bit more. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> you real asshole. <laughs> yeah, well, you still have to do the news. Are you having trouble keeping up with the ebbs and flows of modern geekery? Is the real world holding you back from knowing what is happening in the geeky world? To answer these and other personal problems brought in by your friends, gaming group, and loved ones, Geek Radio Daily presents daily informational sessions brought to you by the wonderful Billy Flynn, the Flynnstress, and podcasting's Rich Siegfried. They contain such helpful segments as history, geek birthdays, box office results, the latest in DVD and Blu-ray, video game and comic releases. Why, they also have a Sweekly show hosted by the wonderful Billy Flynn and the Flynnstress, which includes interviews and commentary. And to make sure you are informed, Geek Radio Daily also provides you with your daily dose of geek news to make sure you know more than that jerk know-it-all Steve. Visit us at geekradiodaily.com. That's right, Geek Radio Daily. All the geek without the weight. Now available in fine Corinthian leather.
fun. Yeah. So that website that uh, Big Papa Bo provided us with, and by us, I mean me, because you've got no fucking say in anything that happens to this show. Uh, That's goddamn right. <laughs> it's made me very happy. I'm starting to find a little bit more stuff here and there in the corners of that website of, that I really enjoy, like I can really get into the groove of. So I'm really happy. That was one of them, man. I really kind of dug that song. It's like this minute long thing, you know? And of right. course, yes, I'm playing something different underneath this right now because I'm just trying to delay a little bit more time and pad out the runtime of this episode before I ask for you to deliver me some sorry off Uh, this one's from Darren. That's our boy Darren from the Psychosomatic Podcast, and good on you for waiting for me to do that. Yes, of course. Florida mom shows up to school with boxy boxy glove, fights child, police say. (laughs) Only in Florida. Only in fucking Florida. So anyway, a Florida mother is facing charges after allegedly finding a student on a middle school campus, according to the First Coast News. Gotta love a girl who can take a punch. Police reports say 34-year-old Edith Riddle of Jacksonville was arrested by Duval School Board Police on Thursday, March 18th. I spilled pee all over the place, but I cleaned it up. I don't know what they got a problem with. Old cops are bumbling dummies. An announcement came over the school radio about a fight happening outside the cafeteria at 12.14 p.m. You can't pay your bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. A school safety officer arrived at the scene and found that Riddle has uh, r- was reportedly involved in a physical fight with the victim. Police said Riddle just left the school with her daughter after meeting with the vice principal. The daughter then walked through the cafeteria to engage the victim in a fight, the report said. Does this make me gay? Riddle's daughter pushed the victim to the ground and and threw some punches before the suspect also joined in punching the victim, who was lying on the ground, according to witnesses. This is all I got for all this story. A girl gets terrified enough. Oh, you no, gotta love a girl who can take that. a pun. Right here, that one. That one. Yeah. You gotta oh, love yeah. a girl who can take a punch. That's all I got because having a Florida woman get it's into sweet. a fist fight with a child, I got nothing. This gets great. <laughs> this First is insane. A witness also said Riddle appeared to have a boxing glove attached to her left hand, according to the arrest report. Riddle reportedly had the boxing glove on her hand when she arrived at the school and told officials it was super glued to her wrist and she couldn't remove it. The report said the female victim suffered abrasions to her knees and forearm. Police also added that the victim was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital for a follow-up evaluation. The victim's parents told police she wanted to press criminal charges as well as according to, uh, as well as according to a report. You can't pay a bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. Riddle was arrested, charged with one count of child abuse and personal inspe- with a personal slash special weapon. I'm going to stockpile all my guns because cops don't help you. To hell with the police. A boxing glove is not necessarily a weapon, though. It pads your hands. (laughs) It's actually like a little protection for both people. It's a sporting equipment. Yeah, but still, she super glued it. Did she? She super glued it so they couldn't take it off of her? Yeah. That's insane. Dude, fucking Florida, man. I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on down there. <laughs> That's just crazy. Like, I, it's nuts. That is the weirdest fucking story we've done in a really long time. Yeah. And it's been a lot of time since we've had a lot of weird ones. <laughs> that is just the most bizarre fucking thing. She super glues a block boxing glove on her hand and her arm all the way down to the wrist to go to an elementary school yes. to fight a child. Yes. <laughs> you got to give yeah. me another story, man. That's insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you want to do this one, uh, the, uh, let's see here. Hold on. I have one here. Yeah. Here's a good one. Montana Montana Senator Steve Dane said his state used to have homegrown meth, but now that it's coming from Mexican cartels, it's more pure. <laughs> no, oh, he's legit. looking for Wang. Uh, I want everyone to know, I literally watched this thing, and he literally said, in our old days, before immigration, we had, our, our meth was grown here in home. It was, it was Montana meth. So anyway... <laughs> Pulling it just to pull it. Montana Senator Steve Dane said during a press conference Friday that methamphetamine in the state used to be homegrown, but is now coming from Mexican cartels. Jump the humongous he was from Texas during a trip to the southern border with fellow Republican senators amid the ongoing surge of migrants. 
20 years ago in Montana, or this is quote, 20 years ago in Montana, meth was homemade. It was homegrown. It had purity levels less than 30%, Dane said. Today, the meth that is getting into Montana is Mexican cartel. It has purities north of 95%. Far more dangerous, far more addictive. And it's less expensive because they're producing so much of it and then shipping it into our country, he continued. Drop the humongous ball. That is fucking insane. This is not the sickness yeah. with which I am down. <laughs> His literal problem is racism. He'd rather have yeah. his meth cooked by white people, is what he's saying. I mean, he literally did a, uh, back in my day, our meth was less pure, but it was homegrown, goddammit. But at least it was cooked by other white people, is what he's saying. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Also a fucking clip, goddammit, but still. <laughs> Danes had a, made similar comments early in the week to local outlet KTVQ ahead of the border trip. He has also said heroin and fentanyl from Mexico have flooded into Montana and that the surge of migrants prevents border patrol agents from focusing on drug traffickers. Street-level meth in the U.S. has become pure in recent decades, in part driven by drugs produced in labs in Mexico, and the San Diego Union Tribune reported. Texas Senator Ted Cruz and John Cornyn uh, hosted the trip, which included Senators Lindsey Graham, Asshole, Tom Cotton, Jackass, and Chuck Grassley, Shitstain, among other douchebags. Uh, okay, that of- is a whole group of people that very clearly have a race as a motivating factor on all oh, the decisions they're making. Me? Yeah, they are. They're all <laughs> fucking racist. This is insane. <laughs> I mean, dude... Fucking Republicans just voted in new Jim Crow laws in Georgia for voting, for fuck's sake. What do you want? (laughs) If it's not clear to even the most, like, fucking... If you can't see that the Republican Party in general is racist, then I can't help you. Soap. I know I'm on it. Shut up. You started it. Soap. So Box. You picked this article. The group of 18 GOP senators visit locations in Rio Grande Valley and with Customs and Border Patrol agents. During the news conference, they rallied against President Joe Biden for the increase in migrants, blaming the president's reversal of Trump-era immigration policies. Meanwhile, a delegation of Democratic lawmakers made a separate border trip during which blame was placed on former President Donald Trump. How about we just say America hasn't had a very good immigration policy for probably the last 25 years? Or since its inception. Okay, well, that's fine, too. Uh, the last uh, major surge of migrants at the southern border was in 2019, with current border apprehensions approaching those levels. The Secretary of Homeland Security said earlier this month that the U.S. is on pace for a larger surge of migrants at the southwest border than he had seen in two decades. But uh, the Montana governor wants everyone to remember when Montana had homegrown meth because it was better. Yeah. Basically, what he's saying is it was better because it was cooked by other white people. That's why he yeah. thinks of that. That's that's exactly what he's saying. Yeah. No, you're. Yeah, exactly. It's a racial motivation as to why he thinks it's better, even though it wasn't as pure. Fucking A. Yeah. And why? I mean, why is he? You okay should with- hear him say it. He sounded even dumber when he said it. But, like, why is he happier that it was once less pure? Because then it was less strong and he didn't have to worry less about people Less strong dying? and less addictive, in his words. <laughs> but in reality, it's just him saying that, you know, it's just him saying that the people who look like him, that's what he wants in Montana. That's all he wants. They're not even veiling it anymore. <laughs> no, no. The the days of the Republican Party somewhat veiling their, their deep-rooted racism is over man they're just uh, they're out in a boot about it how very canadian in the way that you just said that i know Oot in a boot all right well it's been political enough so i'm not even going to try and brave another news story because god knows what you're going to put out in front of everybody so you can hop on your soapbox and turn this into the psychosomatic cast that you're I mean, never gonna i got guess one on. from i got one from robert our man in the field yeah we're done we're done we're done i don't okay. trust you anymore bat it, it's not a political one i don't believe you we're fucking done all right fine jesus if you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, 
Pick 6 Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. when I've been accused of playing a lot of garage rock on this show, especially in the first and second year. I think yeah. I think that was kind of something that I've been accused of doing, which I would proudly say is probably true, at least for the first three or four years until copyright became a concern. Although a lot of the stuff that I was playing, I don't even think any of those artists have been seeing one dime for any of those <laughs> regional <laughs> hits that they had. You know, I just don't know if that's even possible. But anyway, this is from the, war- the royalty-free site uh, that we get to use or that licensing site that we get to use and that very much has the garage rock feel that has been missing from this show since I've had to worry about copyright <laughs> oh, nice. so if nothing else is that else, the site I'm that happy. Robert showed you or no uh, who showed you that one that's Bo Bo, our, Bo showed you that our papa Bo offered this to me yes. daddy daddy showed you that that's nice <laughs> I don't know if he likes that we call him that or not. Um, I don't even know if he listens to the show. If he if he does, he's heard us call him that before, right? Yeah, and you heard us call him Papa or Daddy. Or, or Big Papa yeah. Bo, yeah. What do you, what do you do? What do you do, Daddy Bo? What are you mad? What are you mad? Are you going to spank us? <laughs> Ew, you just made it weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. I made it weird. All right, all right, fine, fine, fine. If you'd like to find the other 292 instances of when Matt has made it weird, not <laughs> counting the one time tonight, and then also possibly last week, I know you didn't, so... That's all yeah. available, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops. So that is everything. Every episode we've ever released is actually there on to that everyone. landing or launching page. We also have our Facebook group available, Cinema Psyops, where thankfully no one got zooked so far this week. Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on all the wood that we don't get, nobody else gets sucked. Yeah, fuck that shit. You know what? Yeah. I, I'm trying my best. I, I try to just basically like, you know, let things go and I try to fight for people, but I don't even get that opportunity. They're just like, hey, this was taken down. You can't do anything about it when you're in the group. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, right? And, it's just like, oh, my God. Yeah, and so many people get put on, like, um, where I have to approve their posts. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking do that. They're right? fucking adults. Fuck that. We're all adults here. Don't fucking be cool, <laughs> suck. I don't want to I don't want to be an administrator. I'm court psyops on Facebook. I don't want to administrate. That's not my duties, no. man. Don't You're make not me court administrator. administrator. <laughs> if you'd like to find Matt on Facebook, he is Matt Administrator. <laughs> 
Watch, someone will try and log in as bad administrator yeah, yeah. and they'll get a backdoor into fucking Facebook and they'll blame it on us. Somebody, yeah, somebody's gonna get in under somebody else's admin account. Yeah, mad administrator. <laughs> yeah. No, he's mad psyop at Facebook. Some other group's just gonna get incredibly fucked. <laughs> if you figure out that hack, email it to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com so that he can reach no, some No, 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 leave me out of it. Leave me out of it. You can also email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. I don't want to know any backdoors unless it's, you know, action. Now we'll talk. Yeah, yeah, ah, the backdoor. And speaking of backdoor the action, door. you can find plenty of that on Twitter, where I'm available as at court underscore psyop, and he is available at psyop <laughs> We're also available in a visible representation of our insanity that is Instagram. I am cinema underscore psyops there. That is the repository of all things stolen meme for the page. Yeah, all them repurposed memes. Well, while you're out there, folks, having your normal Easter Sunday that's been totally destroyed by two filth mongers in your ears, kick the fuck out of this resurrection and make it your bitch. Fucking do this. Start recording. I am recording. One, two, three. Hey, Farb looks good. Yeah. Yep. You hear that? Yeah. Yep. All right, let's fucking go. Yeah. No, actually, I just lost my complete fucking plot of what I was trying to do anyway, but right. That's awesome. House of Insane. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. And that is our first clip. All four minutes, 17 seconds of it. Jesus. Yes, sir. Strap in. Doc is almost trying to treat him as well, kind of like, hey, uh, you know, what what the hell is wrong with you, big guy? Um, <laughs> hey, shoots, you're not exactly helping the mental health of those yeah. around you in this place. You uh, you doing okay there, big gunner? <laughs> want to go outside and throw the ball around a little bit there? Wanna, yeah, you want to go outside and throw the ball around some? Hey, sport, come on, you're going to be all right. Hold on, you're going to hear something. Hold on. Open me up another seltzer. <laughs> sure, that's what you call it. <laughs> Actually, I am. I'm drinking now those fucking water, like, just sparkling water things. Uh, I'm big into those now, actually. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Erica's, they're, yeah, my, the wife's got me into those, and then you put a little bit of, like, the, you know, those Mio, like, little squirt bottles? Yeah. Put a little lemonade of that in there, and it's really good. Zero calories, so. I've been drinking the, um... I, it's like Walmart's brand. I think it's the Clear American or whatever. That's pretty good, too. That's had good stuff on it. Yeah. Fuji Apple, White Grape, and Mandarin oh, yeah. Orange I'm all hugely addicted to, and it's like a liter, and it's gone, like, super fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good shit. That is, I've had those before. That's really good. All right, <laughs> no sorry. one cares about this it. at all, so let's get moving. No, well, no, I just wanted to open that up to, to Caport. I was getting thirsty. So, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but now it's part of the outtakes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We see one of the one of the uh, patients. She gets a hold of one of the barber's razors, and no one notices. You want me to mulligan After- that all together so that's not even in the outtakes? What? Yeah, <laughs> mulligan that. I yeah. should probably say it like that. Yes. One of the patients. So that's why directors have to always do the long chase scenes. Got to pat for that time. All right.
fuck out of this resurrection and make it your bitch. <laughs> Enough blasphemy there for you? Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, I know what I'm getting with you by now with the uh, blasphemy. <laughs> Whatever, you openly participated in it for the longest fucking time because you didn't like being do. one-upped on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I still do. Hold on. All right, I've stopped recording.